Hey, what's going on, guys? Tanmaya for Simple Snippets, and in today's video tutorial, we're going to be understanding the if-else control structure. So, in the previous video tutorial, we already took a theoretical view about what are control statements, and we saw the two different types of control statements. That is, the conditional control statement and the looping and iterative control statements. So, this is a video tutorial on if-else control statement, which falls under the conditional control statements. And today, we are going to be taking a practical aspect. So, we are going to be programming three different programs so that we understand how to use the if-else control structure. So, let's start off with today's topic. So, as you can see on the screen, I'm already started off with a project so quickly go ahead and start off your NetBeans IDE and today we are going to be programming three different programs by the way I have increased the font of the program so if you want to increase you can go to tools options and just select this option button and you can see you can increase the font over here I have increased the font so that it is better visible on the video I have already created a project you can go ahead and create new project file new project and you are good to go so inside the public static void main Let's start off with the programming and let's start off with question number one. So let me just read out question number one. So write a program to find out whether a number is even or odd. So we have to declare a number. So let's start off with creating a variable. I'll say int x is equal to four. So I'm just giving it a hard coded value. I'm not taking it from the user as of now, just for simplicity purpose. And now we have to check whether this number is even or odd. So logically, how do we check a number for even or odd? We divide it by zero and we see if the remainder is zero or not, right? So if the number is even, the remainder is always going to be zero, right? So logically in programmatical perspective, the way we go about this logic is we say if, so I'm just creating the if else control structure and this is how the syntax goes. So you have to type if then opening and closing round brackets and then opening and closing curly brackets. So this is the if block. Now inside the opening and closing round brackets of the if block, we have to give a condition. Now the condition is if x mod 2 equal equal to 0. So what exactly is this condition? So this x is our variable that we created. This mod will give you the remainder of this operation and we are taking a mod with 2, which means that 4 mod 2 will be equal to 0, right? So 4 mod 2 will always be equal to zero. Let me just comment this out. So if you want to comment, just give two forward slashes and it will be commented. So this is a comment and it does not affect the program. So this modulo operator gives us modulo operation. You already know what mod operation is, right? It is a mathematical mod operation, which gives us the remainder rather than the quotient. So division gives us the quotient, but modulo operation gives us the remainder. So if X would have been three, so X is an odd number. So three mod two will always give you one, correct? And then you can see we are checking for whether the op operation is giving us zero or not. So this equal equal to is checking with this zero. So if the result of x mod two is equal equal to zero, then this entire expression becomes true, right? And if it becomes true, then this if block will be executed. So inside this, there is always a condition. And if that condition is true, the if block is executed. Otherwise we have the else block. So again, we have to type in else and then opening and closing curly braces. So these curly braces stand for the if block and these curly braces stand for the else block. So let me just quickly type out the condition again. I'll say x mod 2 equal equal to 0. So essentially what we are saying is, is x modulo 2 equal equal to 0, which means that it would be an even number. So inside the if block, I can say system control space. If I hit control space, I already get the three options. So this is one feature of NetBeans, which is known as IntelliSense. So just select system.out.println number is an even number. Save this, just copy this entire statement. And if it is not an even number, which means that if x mod 2 is not equal to 0, then this entire block would be skipped and this block would be executed. So inside this, I'll just paste this statement again and inside the output, I'll just type in number is an odd number. Let's save this. Let's try to run this and let's see what the result is. Right now x is 3. So system.out.println number is an odd number should be printed and this should not be printed, right? So let me just run this and there you go. You can see number is an odd number is printed, which means that the else block was executed and this if block was not executed because this statement was false. Now I can say x equals to 4. Let's see for an even number. Now this if block should be executed and else block should not be executed. Let's try to run this. And there you go. You can see number is an even number. 
So this was the first program wherein we had a condition and we had to check whether the number is even or odd. We had two different conditions. So we used if and else block and this is how the syntax goes. I hope this is clear. Let's try to see a question number two wherein the idea will be more clear to you. So let me just read out the question number two. So write a program to find out whether a number is positive, negative or zero. So now we have three different conditions. So we have to check if the number is positive, if the number is negative or if it is zero. So again, coming back to the main function, let's start off with first if block. So I'll say if x greater than zero inside the if block print number is a positive number. Okay. So what did I just type in, in the condition? So in this condition, what I gave is I'm checking if x is greater than zero. So this is a conditional operator, which is a greater than sign. So it is checking if this x is greater than this zero value. And if it is greater than zero, this if block will be executed because this condition will become true. If this condition becomes true, the if block is executed. Now there is another condition which is for negative. So I'm going to say else if, and I'm going to give this condition if x is less than zero, then inside opening and closing curly brackets, I'm just going to copy this entire statement and paste it over here. I'm going to say number is a negative number. And then we also have a third condition. So I have to also check for zero, right? So if the number is not greater than zero and it is not less than also zero, which means we are left out with only one option. And then the else block, we can directly write down number is neither positive nor negative, right? So it must be zero, right? So I'll say, so it must be zero. Okay, so what is the difference over here? Here we are using the else if block as well, which we did not use in the first program because we had only two conditions. Now here we had three different conditions. So I use the if block inside that the condition was if x is greater than zero, then I use the else if block. So this is the syntax for else if block. We have to type in else space if, and then we also have to give a condition. So inside this condition, I was checking if the x is less than zero, which means if it is a negative number. And lastly, in the else block, I don't have to give any condition. So when I say else, it means that everything except these two conditions. So when these two conditions become false, this else block is going to be executed. So in the else block, I say, since the number is neither positive nor negative, it must be zero, right? So that's the logic that we've implemented. Let's try to save this and let's try to run this. As of now, X is four, which means that it is positive. So this should be executed. So there you go. Number is positive. So positive was printed. Let me change this to a negative number. I'll say minus six and execute this. So there you go. You can see number is a negative number. Okay. Let's try to give X as zero, which means the last else block should be executed. So there you go. You can see number is neither positive nor negative. So it must be zero was printed. So we successfully created program number two and we used the if else if and else block. So this was slightly different because we had three different conditions rather than two different conditions like for what we did for question number one. So let's move on to question number three. Let me just first erase this out. Okay. So let me just read out the question number three. So we have write a program to find out whether a number is positive and even. Okay. So we have two conditions, but they are nested conditions. So we want to check for a positive number, which is also even. So you can see we have an and between, which means that we want a number which is positive as well as even. So let's see how we can do this. Let me just first assign this as three. And again, start off with the if block. I'll say if X is greater than zero, which means that it is a positive number, right? And in the else block, I'm going to say system dot out dot println number is a negative number. Okay. So here I'm checking for positive or negative. So if X is going to be greater than zero, we are interested in positive and even number, right? So anything apart from a positive number is not what we want. So we are more interested in this condition. So if X is greater than zero, we found out that X is positive. Now we also want to check if X is even. So inside this if block, I can have one more if block. So I can say if X mod two equal equal to zero, then inside the second if block, I can say number is positive. Number is a positive and even number because we've already checked 
x is greater than zero. And when this is true, this block is going to be executed. And inside this block, we have one more if. So inside this, we have x mod two condition, which was the condition where we checked for the question number one. So this question number three is combination of one and two. So even if this is true, then it will mean that x is greater than zero and x mod two is also zero, which means that it is positive as well as an even number. And here in the else condition, I can say number is positive, but not even because this condition would not have satisfied. That's why this else block would have executed. Okay. So let's save this and let's try to run this as of now X is three, which means that this block should be executed. That is the inner else. So you can see number is positive, but not even is printed. Let's try to make it a negative number run this, you can see number is a negative number. Now if I make it zero, it would print this else only because it is still not greater than zero, right? It is equal to zero, but it is not greater than zero, which means that this else block would be printed and we would have get a got a message number is negative. Instead, I should be writing here number is not positive because we are not checking for negative numbers. Let's save this and let's try to run this. And there you go. Number is not positive is printed. If I make it a negative number, I'll say x is equal to minus five. Let's save this. And if I run this, you can see again, number is not positive. Now let's give a positive even number. So I'll say six. So six is positive as well as even. So this if block should be executed the inner if, and there you go. You can see we got a desired output number is positive and even number. So question number three is an example of nested if else, wherein we have one if else block inside one larger if else block. Okay, so this was a little bit complicated compared to one and two. In fact, this was a combination of question number one and two. Also do note that we don't need to have an else block always. So if I just erase this, it's okay. The program will run, but we cannot have directly else block without an if block. So if I erase this out, then it will throw an error. You can see an error over here else without if. So you can see in the tooltip also it is showing else without if, but we can always have an if without an else. Okay. If I save this, no, no issues. The program will run fine. Only that else condition will not be checked. So this message would not be printed if the number is positive, but a odd number. That's it. So always remember we can have only if, and we can exclude the else part if you are not interested in it, but we cannot have an else part without an if part. So yeah, that's it for this video guys. I hope the entire concept of if else control structure is very clear because we saw three different programs and we saw the different combinations in which we can use if else control structure. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any doubts, you can put them in the comment section. Let me know how this video was in the comment section and I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.